How's it going, guys? Today is Water Change Wednesday. I'm going to be performing a little surgery today with these forceps. I started out with bone cutters, but that didn't work. If you look behind me and you're perceptive, you'll see that the Pasolopora, the whole colony, is in a different location. I'm going to show you what happened today to have it wind up there. New viewers, this is Water Change Wednesday. You ask questions out underneath the video in the comments below, and I answer them there, and then I'll answer them here. I thought what we do today is we'll do the water change Wednesday and then I'll show you what I did inside the tank here. I've also had an issue with my green star polyp and I'm going to show you what's going on in there today also and what my thoughts are and maybe what your thoughts are on what's going on with them. I wanted to thank everyone, the new subscribers, thank you. New viewers, thanks for coming on board to Tom Reefer. I hope you enjoy it and you learn a little from it and get some laughs out of it. I had lots of questions this week, so I had to selectively pick the ones I thought that might make the most sense, and then I'll try to get to the other ones next week. All right, let's get right into Water Change Wednesday. Here's one from Barry's Aquarium. He's having trouble with his zinnia. He said for months they were growing awesome and now suddenly they're starting to die back. Zinnia are known to do that. They'll grow like a weed and then suddenly for whatever reason it's nothing that you're doing wrong. They'll begin to grow back and die back, completely disappear. I've had my zinnia now for about four or five years and that hasn't happened yet. And what I've found is that the longer you have your colony, or if you get one from a colony that survived very long, you do better with that one. What I recommended that he do is before it completely dies off, find a nice stalk that's still growing well and cut that off and just let that grow somewhere else. Xenia, once you cut them, will float around and attach to anything. You just have to let them float and they'll attach. Now, if you have a particular place you wanna place it, then what I would recommend is you get a small cup of crushed stones or some gravel, larger pieces and a low flow area. Put the zinnia inside there, put a couple of the small pieces of live rock around it and within days, it'll attach to that and then you can glue it elsewhere. Let's take a look at my efforts at surgery on my pasolipore in here. What I thought was going to be an easy pruning job turned out to be major. So let's take a look at it. So what I'm trying to do is take some of this out up here, guys, off this pasolipore to let some more light come through. These were getting a little more shaded. I moved them out but I'm not sure that this whole thing is gonna fall apart. What I use for this are these bone cutters. So what I'll do is I'll try to go in. I have to cut from down here. This isn't easy. Uh, now the clownfish is gonna start bothering me. Beginners, what you're gonna find in this hobby is anything you set out to do that you think is going to happen exactly the way you would like, forget about it. That happens sometimes, but not all the time. That's loose. See how loose it is? That's going to come right off. Here's an alkalinity and dosing question. Mark asks, he noticed I was two-part dosing in my 20-gallon tank, and he also noticed that I use Kalkwasser 
in my water makeup. And he asked why I would need to do both. And the simple answer is, guys, Calcwasser is great and it helps raise your DKH, but what it doesn't do is create a real even balance between alkalinity and your calcium. So when you two-part dose, you're putting calcium and alkalinity in equal parts. So it gets it really close to that of seawater. Can dose Calcwasser and maintain a higher calcium level and keep your alkalinity stable? but it's not the same as two-part dose. See? Look at that. Oops, I did break something off the back. Okay. Oh man, look at that. I lost half of it. This is real Tom Reefer, guys. You know, it's just not gonna glue on there. There's no way I'm gonna get any kind of glue. Ooh, that might work. Found a spot. All right, so you can see here, the Apostolopora is now down below. Before, it was up near the top. And what I've done, I haven't glued it in there, so this potentially might be a temporary thing, but maybe not. It's down there. It looks aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. It's okay. But the other half, what I'm showing you here, is that big fragged piece of Pasolapora. I just stuck it up in the 3.5 gallon Pico. And it's amazing because that started out to be about the size of this at one point. Maybe a year ago I've had that, year and a half. I got a couple questions on the ATO light that I'll address and also some comments. David asked if you can put the sensor on the smart ATO light in your main display and I told him yes but it has to be in a lower flow area if the water is really tumbling or bubbling a lot in that area then it's not a good idea it'll trigger the sensor to go off however it doesn't have to be perfectly flat but it should be in a lower flow area and in the area where you're not getting intense light on it. Sometimes the intense light will cause the sensor not to come on. I've never had that problem. Uriel says he just got some green star polyp and for the first few days they were doing well, they were open, and then after a few days they closed. Green star polyp can be kind of finicky in the beginning. Sometimes they'll be closed for weeks at a time. That's what's going on in my tank now and I'm not so sure why. All right, this is my theory on the green star polyp, guys. If you look at this older image, you can see how much more full it is and how it was growing all over the place. But it's kind of scaled back and it doesn't open up as much as it used to. Now my guess, it's still growing. Look, I'm gonna have to go rip it off this because that'll just keep growing right up my Stylophora. And it's growing in the high light areas. He said after his water change, they closed up. What I would recommend is that he tests his water for pH and alkalinity and then test his makeup water for pH and alkalinity just to make sure they're close and obviously temperature and salinity it's possible maybe they were off a little bit and that caused the green star polyp to close my thought i have a couple and you can leave some in the comments below i know this is going to be too dark you're not going to see it I have a peppermint shrimp back there who has just completely doubled in size. I've had him a year now and he's making his way around the tank all the time now. My thought is that he's either eating some of these or picking at some. Green star polyp, guys, is one continuous colony. If it's separated and it's growing in two different places, then that's not considered the full colony. If this peppermint shrimp is pulling or tugging or eating some of these, even if it's not right out in the front, it affects the whole colony. They'll all retract. Everything else in the tank looks fine. It's growing well, looks good, Everything's good. That's the only thing that I'm concerned about right now. Or it could be what I said in the question. Maybe picky and just kind of withdrawing in a lot of spots. The other thing is, is it might be because of these shaded areas. But if you notice in the other image, 
it's growing a lot in the shaded areas. So, I don't know. Leave your comment if you have an idea. I think that's enough for today. What do you think, guys? All right. I agree.